Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's me Anarya and today I wanted to make a video about the book Verity by Colleen Hoover. So I read the, so I read the book like a week ago and as someone who has read Verity you might know that the viewers of Verity are classified under two categories. As someone who has read Verity you might know that the viewers of Verity are classified under two categories. Number one, team manuscript and number two, team letter. So if you haven't read the book, go and read it and that's when you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. Just a little outline of the story. Loen is a struggling author who is given the project to complete a book series by the famous author Verity Crawford. And she has to complete three books in her series because, you know, Verity goes through an accident and stuff like that and she can't move at all. She can't do anything. She, her brain is paralyzed and everything. Her body is totally paralyzed. And so she has to complete her books. So Luen goes on and she lives in Verity's house with her husband and her one kid. She had Verity, okay, so the family tree of Verity is like Verity, her husband and her two daughters, twins and the little boy, right? So the two daughters, they died separately in different accidents. And now, you know, Verity has also been through an accident and their life is totally messed up. Loen goes there and while searching through her stuff, she also finds out, you know, a manuscript of Verity. And now that manuscript was titled Autobiography. And in that autobiography, basically Loen reads a lot of Verity's secrets, right? And which are not nice secrets. They are literally very dark and hideous secrets of hers. By and the book ends, you know, we make it clear that... Verity is the villain and you know she even dies and still you know when the book finishes we find out a letter that Verity wrote for Jeremy before she died. That letter basically explained Verity's you know autobiography like how it was not the reality it was just a writing exercise told to her by her editor and you know she explained all the stuff that happened. Basically the ending of Verity is not certain and it's left upon the viewers to decide whether which part of the story do they want to believe right. It is a very obvious fact that we only read Loen's side of the story so we will never get to know the actual Verity and we are just judging her on the basis of our observations and it might not be true, right? But still, you know, if anyone comes up to you and says that the letter was true because, you know, Colleen Hoover is also an author and if she could write about it and she's a mother, then why not Verity? Just give them the points I'm about to state or share this video to them and throw it on their face because Verity was an evil psychotic bitch all right now here's why i'm gonna give you reasons why the letter was not true and the manuscript version of verity was the true verity right number one she says that jeremy had already read the autobiography but there are two reasons why i can tell you that jeremy had not read the biography i've read the book twice all right so don't complain <laughs> when loen gave jeremy the autobiography and told him to read it his reaction was shown genuine and that he had lost his mind and he literally went on and he grabbed her by the neck and everything so it literally shows that his reaction was genuine and he hadn't read the book before right and also, if Jeremy had read the autobiography and, he, and if he was scared that she was uh, capable of doing such things to her children, he would never let Crew near her. But Crew was near Verity all of the time and Jeremy never suspected anything. Reason number two is the birthmark on Chasten's face. Right, now obviously it was clear much stated that it is really common for t uh, twins to have that but still you know it is a factor to be counted as to why Chasten had that and you know even Harper was born with that uh, disorder and both the daughters had some sort of disorder they had to cope up with so that is not very normal right so reason number three is that Verity wrote the letter the day she found out that Loen was reading her manuscripts and that you know her husband was involved with her in some sort of way and that is the day she wrote the letter just to clear her tracks you know so if something comes up and she has to clear her tracks as to state why she is innocent she wrote that letter Reason number four is that, you know, if she was actually scared of Jeremy and that Jeremy could do any harm to her and stuff like that, I think she would have at least tried getting Luen on her side, you know, as an ally or something like that. She could do that, but she never did. In this book, you know, Verity was known for her writing because she wrote the book from villain's point of view, right? And her 
According to her letter, Amanda, her editor, told her that you should have this writing practice wherein, you know, you state the same things that happened to you as a villain so that you can actually apply that to your books and make them even seem even better and real. But if that was true, Amanda would have told the same to Loen as well, right? Because Loen was completing Verity's work. So in order to make it sound like Verity, she would give her the same tips that she gave Verity. But it was never mentioned in the interview or anything like that. Reason number five is whenever, you know, uh, Loen asked Jeremy about her and Verity's relationship, he always said that the physical relationship was great, you know, there was a great chemistry like that, but the emotional, intellectual relationship was not that great, you know, it was uh, like, um, there wasn't that sort of understanding they had and they always felt like strangers at points. So that is also to be kept in mind because in her manuscript, that is what she said throughout it, right? And that is what it was, according to Jeremy as well. Reason number six and the most interesting reason for me was that, you know, when Verity wrote that letter, she said that the letter was addressed to Jeremy. But in my point of view, I think, but according to me, I think that the letter was not addressed to Jeremy. It was actually addressed to Loen because Verity knew that most probably Loen would be the one to find about it. Right. And the reason why I'm saying that is because, you know, in the, in the letter she told that why the autobiography was false and it wasn't even an autobiography. But while doing so, she also, you know, explained a lot of incidents that already had Jeremy in it. Like she told things like Jeremy was the one who got her into that accident. Jeremy choked her and tried killing her twice and stuff like that. But if the letter was actually addressed to Jeremy, she wouldn't have to repeat all that stuff, right? Because Jeremy was there. He had witnessed it already. But the fact that she wrote it and she explained it, she explained it in a way she was explaining it to a third person. And the only third person here was Loen. So here we go. These are the points that justify why Verity was evil and she wasn't, you know, that pretty little thing in that letter she said, like she said throughout you know while i was reading the book i don't know why but i kept wondering that jeremy would be the villain somehow you know the uh, roles would change and jeremy would turn out to be the bad guy he did something or he was responsible throughout the book i don't know i just kept thinking about it but the, it, the ending was really unexpected like for me it was really unexpected when i read this book i couldn't sleep at night like the fact like people like verity exist like you know when someone is so manipulative you can't even decide what part of the story that they're telling is true right because i don't know the <laughs> the manipulation skills were quite impressive to be honest whenever you read a colleen hoover book like you finish the book and then you look at the cover and then you understand what the cover is all about because the cover always have that hidden meaning you know that twist or something like that something very uh, significant but while i was reading this book i couldn't figure out what the cover was like you know and then while i was reading online about it then i found out that the cover, you know, that actually was the fishnet through which Harper died. And I was speechless because this is the most insane book cover ever, ever. Like, I was speechless, literally. Like, this was the best book cover idea, to be honest. And the whole book, to be honest, was so amazing. And Colleen doesn't usually write books like these. Uh, most of her books are about romance. Like, they have these kind of plot twists and stuff like that. But most of her books are about romance. The only psychological thrillers, I guess, she has is... Um, one is Verity and the other one is Lala. I'm reading Lala currently. And I've read a lot of Colleen Hoover books. And I'm going to make a guide on her by me once I finish most of her books. So, yeah. And yeah, I guess that's it. So... If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and to support me and the channel, make sure to subscribe and share this video with your friends or family or anyone who is a Colleen Hoover fan or has read very Until next time, take care. I love you all. Stay safe.